Everything is rolling. Everything's rolling. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think we're good. Let me just check my hair real quick. Oh, let me see. Got it. Got it. Uh. Um, so yeah, I think you've been in the department for what? Uh, how long? So coming up in August, I think it's, uh, let's see, it's 18 years. You I don't know. Do I get a watch for 18 years or I something like a know. clock or something like that? Uh, maybe about a year. Yeah, so I arrived at Hopkins in 99, and this was one of my very first projects, actually. So it was obviously intimidating. I, I love the culture. Uh, the people here are fantastic. Uh, when people say it's like a family, they, they really mean it. Um, and our department does a lot of things to really keep a cohesive unit together. The best, best part of working is, uh, it, it, is going to your coffee, coffee tea time, time, lunch hour, or happy hour, hour, then like Friday afternoons right before it's weekend time. <laughs> you got it! <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. What I can tell you generally is that there have been so many instances of whether it be faculty or students going beyond themselves to do things for the good of the whole that maybe are not the things that would have helped them the most individually. Just get in there and do good things and be proactive and it will all work out. Not because you're sitting back and, and sort of wondering what our role is, but because you grab it and have a role. We haven't had played a major role just yet, but we're heading in that direction. You know, we think there's, you know, puppeteering is a real growth area in the field of statistics and uh, we're hoping to be a central part of it. Alexa, ask Neural Conductor about the future of data analysis. Mm -hmm. Scott, you were an expert uh, in the lawsuits brought by the state's attorneys general and the Department of Justice against Philip Morris and Big Tobacco. What was your role in these lawsuits? So these uh, suits claimed that the tobacco industry either committed a fraud against the public or uh, was engaged in a conspiracy against the public uh, to harm their health. And, uh, our job was to figure out how, what were the costs associated with those uh, damages. Well, what we did was take current people that are living in the U.S. and imagine had they not smoked, what would their expenditure profile and their mortality experience had looked like and their disease process experience had looked like. So there had been a history in the department when this opportunity came along. Uh, it was really great for the department to continue its role and, and to contrast our role in trying to advance the public's health to the role of other, you know, um, experts who, you know, sided with uh, trying to save the money for the tobacco industry. And uh, so we, I, we felt great about that. Mm -hmm. I, I really have the good fortune of working with so many faculty in all different departments of the school and uh, getting their ideas and their, you know, their motivation to, you know, to help students and bring out the best, uh, the potential of students. So this year, um, we had 250 students in the full-time MPH program. We have about 300 in the part-time online program. So um, we had something like 792 students um, across the years being advised by you know, 500 faculty members in the school, <laughs> both in terms of academic advising and capstone advising. It's a and great ratio. It's, a, it's, <laughs> it's actually an incredible um, ratio because you're right, some, some faculty only advise one or two, others may advise ten, but it all depends on the interests of both the faculty member right. and the students. Did you ever think when you started this that it would become so uh, well-renowned and popular? So I think when we originally thought of this idea, we, I mean, we, we would have been happy if five people had seen it. Because frankly, I think we thought of it as just, let's get our stuff out there. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's allow people to have access to it. You know, whether they want it is a different story. Right. And so uh, we would have been happy just having it out there for just, you know, a few people to use. And little did we know that, you know, that you know, tens, hundreds of thousands of people, you know, would be taking these courses. We had no clue, no sense at all um, of what the kind of interest in data science was. And I think we really kind of got lucky in the sense that we, our timing was just purely, it was just, it was great. Can I, can I say one other thing? Of course. So, so um, Elizabeth was being quite modest in talking about her, you know, lack of epidemiologic background, but she actually came with um, training as a sort of an applied statistician and was amazingly effective in coordinating all the data and doing all the, the programming and making sure the programming was reproducible. You know, we, we were doing reproducible research ahead of the curve, and it was good that we were because the tobacco industry hired hundreds of 
people around the country. You probably still meet, meet people who say, oh yeah, I, I know you. I was the person trying to debunk your program. How I, well, I think it's more about thinking about how the department will fit around me than how I'll fit in the department. It's you know that's that's more the direction I'm I'm, I'm sort of going for. Um, so we're living in your world. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, but uh, you know, I think really the sky is the limit. You know, it's funny, when you first start studying statistics, you learn about asymptotics and the idea of n going to infinity, right? And I was always curious, like, was there anything I could do that would go to infinity? You know, and I thought about money, but, uh, you know, that, that becomes problematic. More money, more problems, right? I thought about food, but <laughs> I'd probably just eat it. You know, so, so I'm on this quest. Uh, my n is number of ties, and I'm on this quest to take that to infinity and yeah. see what it converges to. Oh, <laughs> always keep my collar popped. Yeah. So yeah, it's old habits. Old habits die hard. You know, my dad was a, a businessman and was always like, a, it's about your handshake and the way you tie a tie. And so it was sort of ingrained in my psyche to do these full Windsors. Alexa, ask Neural Conductor about the future of data analysis. Mm -hmm. The, you know, this is like the, the end of a, of a very long, kind of years-long process where we really want to kind of get a lot of our courses um, online and available to a larger group of people. In terms of the numbers of people, the numbers of enrollments that we've had through the courses on, is greater than 4 million. Wow. Um, and uh, in terms of the numbers of people who've completed the course, it's in the many thousands now. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. That's excellent. Our department, and I think the field also, we have many 21st century statisticians. You're an example, many others. There are some examples of 20th century statisticians who are still hanging around and hopefully adding value. I could definitely say I'm one of those who's 20th century may be adding value. We're bigger and more diverse in every way, both in terms of applications and methods and faculty types and so on and so forth. The increase in puppet diversity in the department has been infinity in the last couple of weeks. I mean, just the, the addition of three puppets has really added so much to the department um, in terms of, oh, I don't know, felt concentration. You know, I think as time goes on, we'll see that biostatistics will continue to have you know, an increasing role in the education of those who then you know, make a big difference in terms of population health. The, the field of data science is always kind of moving. It's a very fast moving area. And so what you taught last year is you know, not necessarily what you need to teach this year. So we're always kind of adapting the content and coming out with new uh, courses to teach, kind of focus, hit different areas of interest. I must say this department was so, despite its small size, was so welcoming, creative, and motivating that not only was I inspired because I was teaching, I wanted to sort of learn more about even sort of the basic underpinnings and study it deeper, but I was just also motivated by my colleagues who were just doing really cool stuff. I think it actually fosters creativity and innovation in a crucial way. If people trust each other, they're willing to take risks because the culture is great, it actually feeds the sort of scholarship that you couldn't get any other way. I think with the invention of the term data science and kind of the you know large data stores going out there, I think there are some departments where I've gotten the feel that they feel that they are at ends with machine learning and engineers, and I don't think our department feels that way. Uh, whatsoever by the seminar speakers that we invite here, the people we invite to collaborate, uh, what we and, and especially what we teach our students and what we allow our students to become. I don't think any department really, you know, says you have to be this or that, but I think our department is very open to saying, you know, you we, we, we hope you do public health, that is part part of our mission, but you can do that in any way that you see fit with respect to research or analysis. People are so uh, you know, smart and clever and, and, and uh, enthusiastic about sort of public health and statistics and, and it's a really great uh, you know, environment to, to, to see that and be a part of that. Uh, and, and, uh, and you know, so, you know, jokes aside, I, 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 do, th I do think that uh, the coffee and the lunch and stuff makes all that other stuff better as well. And it, what, what makes us sort of unique is because we, we have a lot of fun. And, and, and I think, you know, having fun while you're doing the serious stuff uh, is, is, is pretty important and uh, sort of underrated in, in many ways. We have just been so fortunate to have a department full of people like these. And, you know, that's what really makes us special. I hope that never changes. Yeah.
Alexa, ask Neuroconductor about the future of data analysis. You should talk to Audie and Brian. They wrote a whole grant proposal on data analysis using the Alexa Amazon system. For example, in the very near future one could ask me, Alexa, open the HCP data and produce a histogram of white matter volume by age groups. Are you the next dean of the school of folk health? <laughs> <laughs> yes, and you're fired. <laughs> Good! Yeah, right. <laughs> so is there anything you'd like to say to any of your other puppets before we uh, end? Oh, you mean, uh, you mean like... Jeff Lake and puppet Roger Bang. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the 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 other two puppets. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I I don't want to, you know, I don't want to badmouth them or anything, but those guys are total hacks. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we're interviewing you, obviously. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, total hacks. I mean, you know, I, I'm trying to think of something nice to say, but 